Okay, so I'd like to discuss the moon phases in some detail, and I hope that last video with the ping pong ball model sort of convinced you that it's really just an orientation between the sun, the earth, and the moon, which dictates which portions of the moon will be lit versus dark versus your vantage point of how you're observing the moon. But let's formalize it a bit more, and also we'll get a nice answer to question number 35, which simply says, why does the moon have phases? So we'll get some answer to that as well. Okay. So to start then, let's just get a little bit of terminology out there and some of the terminology that's associated with these phases because they have names which are somewhat important to you to know is the word waxing comes up. The word waning comes up. The word gibbous comes up. And the word, as you might guess, crescent comes up as well. Okay. So you just need to think a little bit about what these words might mean here. And it goes like this. Waxing means growing. Okay. And likewise, ma waning means going away. Uh, personally, I never hear the word waxing in any context except the moon. But waning you hear from time to time, like... Um, the wind might start waning or a, a very loud noise from a concert might start waning as the concert um, ends, that kind of thing. Okay, just a little tidbit for you there. Gibbous has always been an irritating word to me and I don't really know what it, why it's here, but this is the greater than sign. So what it means is basically greater than a semicircle. Okay, this is the greater than sign right here. Okay, greater than a semicircle. And lastly, Crescent here basically means less than a circle or a disc with a segment remove. That's basically what crescent means. So that's just some of the terminology associated with phases. And so we'll get those labeled on here. Like for instance, if I go back to the moon phase over here, which I scratched out, you can see varying degrees of these words pop up in here. These might be crescents here, and there might be some gibbuses in there, and, and depending on what the moon's doing from night to night, it might be waxing as it grows into a full moon, or it might start to wane as it goes from full moon on down to total darkness again. So that's where the terms come from in there. Uh, but let's just continue then. And so the thing that you're going to think about then, uh, some of the really common graphics or whatnot to describe these, I think sort of came out maybe in the model that I drew. But if you have the sun like this here, then what your concern is, is if you have the moon, say, which might be right here, so here's the moon, then, of course, the side that faces the sun, this side right here, here's the sun, the side that faces it like this, that's always going to be the one that's nice and nice and bright for the reasons that you just might, might guess here. It's the side that's facing the sun. And the other side, the back side here, is going to be dark because it's away from the sun. So all those will be dark here. So still the moon is still a solid sphere and all that sort of thing. It's just that because of the way the light's hitting it, this is going to be sort of the lit side right here. And that's going to be sort of the dark side. And the thing that's important to know about this is sort of no matter where the moon moves around the sun, this sort of lighting model is going to hold. Like for instance, suppose I picked up this moon right here that I just drew and dragged it over to here, right, as it goes around in its orbit. So like the Earth would be somewhere in between and the moon might go around like this. It's always important to know that this is always going to be the illumination model for the moon. The side that faces the sun will always be lit and the side that's away from the moon will always be dark like that. So it's always sort of this half-half kind of thing. So it isn't like this shadow ever grows or goes away or anything like that. And so just keep that in mind that the this half will always be lit and that half will always be dark. And so let's just go at it then. Let's see if we can just draw then the phases of the moon and get them labeled. Okay. So what we'll do then is sort of a pretty standard drawing in this business here. Um, we won't draw the sun because we just sort of don't need that. But what we'll do is we'll say, okay, let's suppose that the sun's light is coming into our frame here from this side. So the sun is somewhere way over here and this is just the light rays coming in. Okay. Then what we'll do is right in the center of this here is we'll draw the earth. So that's always what we're standing on here. Something like this. Here's the earth right here. 
And then what we'll do is we're just going to start drawing the moon at various positions around the Earth. And we're going to try to draw and see what phase we might possibly be seeing. So I'll pick that up in the next video.